Well, it's time. That's it. It's time. Show over now, right? Nothing, nothing else exciting happened this week, did yeah, it? Yeah, there wasn't that much else. So, any move in the cinema? Looks hey. right. You went to see opening day, didn't you? On the Wednesday. I went opening day. I, I just was not going to risk getting spoiled. I fully expected just to be like, yeah, I'm going to take it casual and just go later on. Because I had tried and book it earlier, like a week yeah. before. But for some reason, the app, the Odeon app, which is a cinema train over here, didn't work. So I need to stop working. Uh, the website stopped working. So I gave up. Universal let me see it when it needs to see it. I'll see it at the end. Then, no, oh, fuck this. I got to go. I go to the view website. Didn't work. It's like everything <laughs> was in the way. Everything was trying to stop me from seeing this bloody film. Is something wrong with your internet. <laughs> no, he was. This is at work as well. I did the view. But then. I decided to slam it. I just go to the closest box down in cinema in Croydon with all the chaps. Turned out to be a pretty good experience. That's was the it a packed screening? It was. It was. Middle of the day. Look, five o'clock. Yeah, it's still great, man. And that was on like the Wednesday. So I'm not the Thursday. So only, only last Yeah. Day. You pooped your brick, didn't you? You were like, or you were like, I am not risking it. <laughs> I've never seen so many spoilers circulating for a film than this one, man. It is insane. See, now I don't get that because even up until last night, um, I haven't actually seen any spoilers anywhere. Oh, you're in a bubble, then, man, because I've been seeing it for over a week. And I'm not it's, talking about yeah. the leak stuff from yeah. the other stuff. People just don't give a fuck and they shoot screenshots. It's all over YouTube in my algorithm. It's like, it's mad. Yeah, it's and they're not um, even like they're just showing the photos of like key moments in the thumbnail, <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck? It, all right. So, it, the one of the things is, how where have people got these pictures from? Oh, they're, I'm assuming they're, they're bootlegs, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that where they're getting them from? Yeah, yeah. they're right there. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. Let's talk about the film then. Spider Man um, No Way Home. Whee! What are your impressions of Eddie, dude? But in a side, the bad mood that I was in initially when I went to the cinema, when I got in there, and that took me about 10, 15 minutes to get over. Bad so, day at work? Can't. Just the fact that I had to go in the shitty cinema with, you know, <laughs> shitty audience. But when they turned out not to be so bad, they kind of like settled in. So that affected the first 10 minutes of the movie. Yeah. Where I was kind of just not in it. But once I kind of settled, dude, it was a joy all the way through. I was just like, I'm loving this, man. Did, did you not find the middle of the film a little bit clunky? I didn't. I personally didn't. I've watched it twice now, and I didn't. Loved it. I did think it was a little bit clunky in the middle. I thought they took what? Parker's like goody two shoes nature like to the extreme. But that's who he is. That's just the character, man. You got to accept that he's that good guy who always wants to try and who was gonna. But try like, is it is it going to affect his character now? Because okay, guys. And by the way, this like we mentioned yeah, earlier, spoilers, this is let's say spoilers. You haven't seen, seen the film. Please go, please go watch the film. Don't listen to us. Come back later. So he he has now affected the death of like this universe's Uncle Ben, essentially. That, that's yeah. what they've done. There. What, what actually needed that that's what gives that naive stuff in the middle more weight is that he needed this reality check because he he this Spider-Man had never had what the other Spider-Mans have had. And that it's, was that grief dying in the arms of yes. Uncle Ben. In fact, people have actually mentioned, and if you think about it, this makes total sense, that this is almost an origin story for, like, this yeah. Spider-Man. Yeah. It's like, at the end of this film, he's friendless, he's alone, the Avengers don't know him. No technology. Um, yeah. That's the yeah. one thing. I've enjoyed all the Spider-Man films, the Holland ones. I've enjoyed them all. But the one thing I've... It's always been a bit of a gripe for me that I wasn't a fan of, and that was the super techie suits with the visor, with, like, all the digital information. Like, that stuff was never Spider-Man for me, or not the version of Spider-Man yeah. I grew up reading. Mm. So for, to strip all that away and for him just to be the dude with this self-made costume that he has, that is what I know of Spider-Man. Yep. And, yeah, it, he, he is truly Spider-Man. I was just... <laughs> Make me so happy. Yep. So... Obviously, like the first big surprise of the film comes quite early in the film. Well, what do you want to? Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this is what I'm saying that this has to bring the this has to make the the Netflix yeah. stuff relevant because not only do you bring Kingpin, but you also bring Daredevil in the well, consistency that, of this, it all. But this could be a Daredevil from another MC from another universe, right? Until. They say that they're making a new series where it has another origin that they completely wash <laughs> away everything else. Um, yeah. I've actually okay. I've been watching Daredevil as well. That's another thing I forgot to mention. I've been watching that show. I've watched it. Are so watching much. it again? Yeah. Um, it's so good. Yeah. It holds Electra. up. Oh, 
Electra. Oh, I see um, too. Yeah. Um, so what? So, so he just comes on the screen like they, there's like no there's no telegraphing or anything and you're like shit i completely forgot the rumors that he was supposed to be in this yeah um, and he's seen is so joyful so good just the fact that he catches that brick as well when it comes through the window <laughs> yeah how did you do that i was actually i was actually really watching good something last night where they actually show a picture not only does he grab the brick but peter also goes to grab it yeah like, yeah the, yeah, beats, yeah beats peter um, to it and the, one of the funniest things about that was I could hear somebody a couple of rows behind me go, like when, when Daredevil catches that brick, they're like, who's that? Jesus. <laughs> That's the problem, man. Everyone doesn't watch everything. You have to remember that sometimes. There but is that. I have yeah. to admit that a lot of people in my cinema, all, Woo! yay! Like, there were very, was your, your cinema? No, book, I, I purposely cinema? booked a screen and time where I knew it'll be, there'll be a load of people in there. That they would, they would not. Oh, I gotta say, Mo. No, don't like. You may, you've missed out on saying there. You okay. missed out on. I the, prefer you my private out. screening. I, I'm, I'm usually ninety nine percent of the time. I completely agree, but this no. was nope. such a communal experience. It was so. Do hilarious. not want that. You can keep your omnicrons to yourself. People <laughs> were crying in the cinema. People were whooping. People were applauding. Like it was amazing, man. It was so crazy. It was a crazy yeah, that would just be annoying. Whoa, no, yes! it, 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 no, it made no, you feel no. like yes, they're getting it. No, We're converting no. more nerds. <laughs> I love it. More people coming to the dark side. Listen, like I know they've converted the nerds, right? Because when I looked to book my ticket that morning, literally every screen in my local view, like they got 20 screens, they were doing the movie like every half an hour. Crazy. Um, so yeah. Peter has to deal with the fact that now that he's been exposed as Spider-Man, that his life is completely right. upside down, not just his. Well, we'll come back to this at the end, right? Uh, but just remind me, there is a paper trail that we need to talk about um, at the end of this film. Um, so, so Peter gets exposed. Everybody knows who he is. It's, yep. it's, yeah. you got one, like for some, some Avengers, it's worse than others. Like there are Avengers who just walk around with like their identity known, right? Yeah. The, well, the problem mainly for him is the fact that one, he's still in school, which is also, it adds its own pressure, but it's the fact that he's accused of killing somebody, that he's responsible yeah. for Mysterio's death, because everyone still thinks Mysterio was a hero. And that, you know what, that, that was obviously like a, a veiled um, commentary on our society today, right? How you can basically make fake news and make people believe what you want. Or, yeah, well, Jake yeah. Jonah Janus is basically yeah. uh, Alan, Alex Jones <laughs> in this. It's Info Wars. That's basically what I've, he is. I've got to say, after watching the original films and like watching these, Jay, no, what's his, what's his real name? J.K. Rowling. Not no, uh, J.K. Simmons. <laughs> J.K. Rowling. Well, same initials, right? Just rolls off. <laughs> J.K. Simmons. Yeah. One of one of the most inspired casting choices of so all good. time. So good. Because not only does he play the part, but he actually looks like the character from the comics. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. <laughs> And I like the fact that they did go with him just being his natural hair with the Holland ones because it does separate them. So you can still kind of take them as separate versions, yeah. but it still works. Um, and, and the fact that he's selling like his little supplements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, daily viewable supplements. I love it. <laughs> um, so yeah, life's a mess. Oh, and the happy got dumped by Aunt May. <laughs> oh, poor happy. <laughs> I'm a little surprised, man. Jeez. He's yeah. very upset about that. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so yeah, so they go and seek out, or he decides, you know, I need to go and talk to... Oh, also, they get rejected from um, MIT. From Not only do they get rejected from MIT, but, like, um, happy gets arrested because, like, apparently loads of missiles have gone missing. Um, well, you they... technically arrest until way later. That was quite the beginning, wasn't it? No, he's accused. He doesn't get arrested yeah. until the okay. Aunt May. Scene. Um, and I like the way that they basically one by one start taking away Peter's like support structure. So you know, like when he doesn't get into MIT, he can't even go to like Stark Industries and ask for like letters of recommendation or a character kind of thing. I've got to say, Shield or whatever's left of Shield, Peter's a shit company. They know what Mysterio was up to. <laughs> hey, they got exposed to it and none of them kind of backed him up to say that yeah this guy was a criminal it's like they just let him hang in the wind money you know things are going to go to hell once tony's gone right uh, yes but shield is its own government thing man that's just uh... well no shield is 
it got it's disbanded, fine. but there was yeah. some elements of it still there. Yeah. So uh, I don't know, man. But uh, yeah. Oh, and Flash Thompson, we got to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he blonde now? <laughs> Why the fuck that's does he go you, across the tips? That that's what you do when you write a book. I was kind of wondering. Flashpoint. What, what, I was wondering what his um, reaction was going to be. Because obviously in the previous films, he's hated Peter Parker, yeah, but loves but Spider-Man. Loves Spider-Man. And now, <laughs> best friends. <laughs> but I think that's a jab at DC, the fact that he called his book Flashpoint. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The oh, yeah. oh, absolutely. Had to be. Well Had played. To be. Well played, Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he goes to see Doctor Strange to cast a spell so that everyone will forget. So did you notice in the trailer... The, the the conversation between him and um what's his name um oh god the um the oh the the other guy from Doctor Strange his sidekick Wong he's Wong not, he's the Sorcerer Supreme now he's, yeah, he's yeah. the guy now Strange is a sidekick now the conversation between them in the trailer is different than what's in the film in the trailer it, Wong says to him like don't cast a spell uh, but in the film it's he like kind of shrugs it off and like goes through the portal and disappears. He does tell him don't, but then he convinces him. He says, "Okay, then yeah. don't involve me." And so it's a different cut from the trailer. It's terrible, sorcerer supreme. Now. You're supposed to be the boss of this, <laughs> not letting people do this world. Well, ending like, I film. guess he kind of knows he can't control Strange, right? Strange is going to do what Strange wants to do. Where is he going? But like, we're going off. Probably going off for another fight, right? It's going like off. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. He's wasting this guy. <laughs> He's the sorcerer supreme. He's having bare knuckle fights with fucking. Uh, Abominable abomination and all that fucking shit. He just wants to go and hang out in the Shang Chi world. Yep. Be with his people. Well, well, he probably knows the shit's about to hit the fan. Might as well get the hell out of there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the spell gets cast. Peter can't shut up. It all goes to shit. And then we get the conversation where it's like, well, at least you tried to convince him. He's like, oh, so I, I could, I could have talk to them <laughs> strange oh, yeah oh, that was brilliant you didn't think to actually plead your case <laughs> and he just gets up in his face and says, you don't call me uh, Stephen. you call me sir like, oh, <laughs> and kicks him out then he goes to the bridge and then we get dr octavius i'm probably in my opinion the best action sequence in the movie Ooh, could be it was a good one it is a Definitely. very, very good one. Uh, beautifully done. And I just love, and this happens throughout the film, just the lines of that. It's, you can tell that the people that wrote it, I think it's two dudes, yeah. that they analysed those original movies because they were taking lines, key lines that were important to those each character. Yep, absolutely. Just throwing them back in there. It was like so... And we were complaining. Remember when we were watching Eternals? And we are like, so, there's too many... It feels overstuffed. It's messy. Yeah. There's too many characters they should have cut it down to just two people this has more characters than that film but it feels like they juggled it so much better yeah but they do concentrate on more than some of the others right so but they still make those lesser characters feel like they had meaty things to do yeah well not like sandman and lizard they didn't really have that much those two didn't (laughs) but they weren't physically on set either so you know they're just voiceovers um yeah, that, that fight is fantastic. The fact that Peter has also then got to save the admissions lady as well. Yeah. Uh, and you can hear her shouting um, during, <laughs> during the whole match. Um, and they're just seeing Alfred Molina um, after all these years. Um, they did a bit of de-aging on him, apparently, uh, but he hasn't missed a beat at all. Yeah, he was good. He delivered everything. So yep. much sinister more. I love how all the designs and all the gadgetry is still consistent with the original films. <laughs> and then when he uh the nano the nanites get onto the arms, allowing <laughs> Peter to to pair. I like it where it's just like a Bluetooth pairing <laughs> on your headphones. Pairing complete. Pair, pairing new device. Yeah. <laughs> and then I really like the way where he suddenly realizes, hold on, you're not Peter Parker. So I'm so confused. Uh, yeah. And then uh after that, Goblin turns up. And then we get zapped away into the, like, the little indeed. basement of the Sanctum Sanctorum. We get, I just love the dialogue of whatever all the prisoners, once they start bringing everybody in like Electro and just them kind of bouncing off each other. Mm-hmm. Such a joy, such a joy. Um, you kind of, I mean, there, there's so many little things in here that unless someone else explains them to you, you probably miss like all the really like little things. Mm. Um, the, the fact that they go... Um, um, 
that each each one of these villains was pulled into this multi into this universe when they learned Peter was uh, Peter Parker. So they go, if you look at like um, the Sam Remy film, when Willem Dafoe finds out he's at Thanksgiving dinner. Um, so when he yeah. goes back, he's not going to be, he's not going to die because he was well before then, but he's now back to a normal person. So he could probably reconnect like with his son. Problem with that is that I don't think Electro ever knew. No, he did. No, he didn't. No, no he, did. Electro, he did. He did. He got so, told. No, 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 no. So Electro they go electric. No, no, no. So I've seen a few videos. They go electro never knew, but they go the way they explained that was they go, he's just from another multiverse. <laughs> no, but he knows that he's um he knows the name Peter he, Parker. He knows the name Peter Parker, but he yeah. never knew who Peter Parker because I think they addressed that in the film because they yeah. go, I thought you were a black dude. Yeah, that's all you're right. <laughs> yeah. But Sandman, though, that I don't remember. I don't I don't remember him ever knowing about Peter in any personal way. No, didn't he? Didn't Peter have his fake mask off at the end of number three? And they're having that like final talk where the Sandman is on the on the, the skyscraper with him and then he turns into sand and flies away. Oh, you're right, you're right. Because yeah. then he explains to him that like he didn't mean stuff. no, he didn't mean to kill Uncle um, uh, Uncle Uncle Ben, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah, an accident. Yeah. So he didn't know, yeah, yeah. yeah you're I mean, right, almost you're right. everything is explained, but there's so much hidden meaning behind everything. Like they you'll even, ne- yeah. They even explain, well, they don't explain, but at least they address why <laughs> Jamie Foxx looks different. Yeah, so yeah. they don't so not necessarily give it an explanation to it, but they address the fact that you look. Have you had a makeover? You were, what happened to the coma? Yeah. It's different. But, but it's even like Doc Ock. They go, the clothes he's wearing are not the clothes from when he was about to die in the Sam Remy film. So they go, maybe he's just a Doc Ock from another universe. Nah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's cool. <laughs> okay. Find those props laying around. Yeah, you, you get someone to stitch them hand by hand, like by hand. Yeah, it's the Marvel yeah. films. They got that money. They did that for Back to the Future. <laughs> I, I've got to say, though, Lizard in The Amazing Spider-Man did look better yeah. than this Lizard. Not to say this, this one looked bad. He didn't have much to do either. He didn't. But when you go back and watch that Amazing Spider-Man, Lizard yeah. looks so good in that. So good. Um, so where do you want to go next? So um, we haven't talked really about Mary Jane. We haven't talked about... Um, Wizard in training, Ben. Not Ben. Uh, what's his name? Ned. Ooh, well, let's talk about Spidey versus Doctor Strange first. Oh, yeah. Strange yes, is about yes. to send them all back with the spell in the box. And Spidey's like, I can't, because you had the, the, the conversation with um, Aunt May by this point about having to help people do what's right. It's not my problem. Send them back where they came from. It's like, no, they're here. You help them if you can. And the fact that she's like helping homeless people kind of gives credence to why she does well, has that it opinion. It does, but like we are talking about mass murdering psychopaths here. But that's the, you have to, yeah. But then these people don't know <laughs> that, innit? Because they're from somewhere else. They don't know the destruction that they've. they've the destruction. So Spidey nicks the box and goes off on this crazy mirrorverse fight scene, which is a. Uh, it's cool, man, seeing these two. Did you catch a laugh when um Spidey was still able to move the box around when he was uh, in his actual yeah. projection? He goes like, how are you doing this? I don't know. <laughs> um, Instinct. It's you, you do kind of think, like, in a fight between Doctor Strange and Spider-Man, Spider-Man should really be no match for Doctor Strange. He shouldn't. But then you remember, yeah. Strange ain't really trying to hurt him. Yeah, He's just trying to get the box back. That's all it is. So that's why he was able to outwit him with yeah. the geometry um, and Bring the problem with strange in this film is that he's just purely there for plot like whenever like he wasn't convenient to the plot he was just like dangling yeah. off like the, but the grand canyon or something i think they did that <laughs> well in terms of how they juggled it compared to how like eternals juggled their characters in that yeah he wasn't needed so rather than just having him there standing in the background doing nothing yeah. they had a reason for him to be away for an hour and then a reason for him yeah. to come back at the end and they're like, oh, for hour, you're thinking, where the hell strange? Where's he gone? I didn't even think about it because there's so much <laughs> happening. You kind of feel like there's enough happening that I don't yeah. really miss strange. But so, yeah, Spidey gets the box back and uh, decides to bring everyone to Happy's apartment. <laughs> let's bring all the psychopaths home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And let's try going. and in a couple of hours, let's try and fix all of their problems. Even when um, we seen Willem Dafoe acting all innocent, and uh, you knew it was only a matter of time yeah. before he switched. 
what uh, what an absolutely epic performance by Willem Dafoe. Oh, right? Just the guy hasn't missed a beat. It's like it was just yesterday that he was in the previous films. No, it was 20 years ago. And this he's in his 60s now. And he was talking in the interview saying that one of the one of the uh, details as to why he was willing to take this role was that he he said that he had to do action scenes. He had to fight and be do the physical oh, stuff. And I'm like, yeah. Oh. I was watching yeah. some of the behind the scenes stuff of the originals. Apparently, he did like um, the majority of his own stunts. Like he wanted to do all that. Yeah, and he's doing it now. And that yeah. fight between him and Peter, man, when he switches back, yeah. whoo, free in the that building good... when he's just power bombing through the floors and oh man, that was a pretty good fight scene. Crazy. How did you feel about um, when Aunt May got hit with the glider? I was kind of thinking uh, she's not going to die, right? She's going to kind of get up. She's going to be banged up. She's going to be in the hospital. It'll all be a happy ending. At first, I thought, oh, have they killed her when she first got hit? Yeah. But then she got up and was walking around. I thought, oh, okay. Yeah. She's just going to shrug but, it off. And, but as soon as she uttered that line of like, with great power comes great responsibility, responsibility. you like nearly it was like. <laughs> you could see she was like in shock, innit? She was all like. Jittery and oh, well, yeah, I'm yeah. fine, I'm fine. And then he just collapsed, and you think, oh no. And then everyone in the cinema was all the women in the cinema, were like, oh, oh no, May. Well, yeah, all the men were like that as well. No, <laughs> not on me. Uh, and Peter needed this man. Like this is the, the the consequences of your actions. You know, you're naive. You make dumb decisions. Boom. This is what you get. Win dumb prizes. Yes. Stop trying to help everybody. That's it. And then he becomes rageful. He's in grief first. This is this it is from this scene, from this heavy scene that we switch over to a, a very comedic scene of seeing um uh MJ and Ned in the kitchen of his what's he, his mum or his auntie? His auntie or grandma, is it? Something like that. Oh, something like that. I know he's got some a, relative that pretends she don't speak English, but she does. <laughs> yeah. He's got a Doctor Strange sling ring. And you already set set up earlier on that he's saying that, oh, my nana says uh, we yeah. have magic in our family. You know, I, sometimes I feel tingles and they kind of give that a reason to why sling ring works. Yeah. So I watched something last night. Apparently they were saying that Spider-Man's best friend in the comics does become like um, like the Green Goblin, right? So potentially are they saying... Osborn. Um, uh, Ned is a different character. He, he, oh, is he a different character? Yeah, but yeah. does he turn evil in the comics? He, I believe he does. Yeah. I think that, yeah, I think it's just that everyone close to <laughs> yeah becomes evil or dead. That's just how it is. Um, but yeah, I don't think they're gonna do this. I think this is it for Ned and Mary, by the way. MJ. I don't um, think they're gonna be in the next Yeah, year. potentially. Yeah. Well, well, I guess we'll talk about more, more about that at yeah. the end. But the this here, probably one of the most seminal moments oh. in cinematic history, right? Dude, I've rewatched this, even on YouTube, that people have been uploading the audience reactions. Yeah. yeah. And I get goosebumps every time I watch a different audience reaction, wherever from around the world. And it doesn't matter where it is, like create countries where you think they won't all get all these references. Yeah. They know it all, man. We just want to see Peter Parker. <laughs> People seem to understand as soon as they see the visors, the big eyes, yeah. they know immediately that that's Garfield from the distance. Took me a second because I'm dumb. Well, I mean, when he like took his mask off, I thought. A fucking John Ralphio or something. <laughs> <laughs> like with the bushy hair. <laughs> but yeah, it was hilarious that as he comes closer, you can just see he's getting bigger and bigger. And you think, oh no, no, Tom Holland's uh he's a little dude, he ain't gonna be yeah. <laughs> six foot whatever he is. So when he yeah. jumped through, it's like, what the fuck? Can't feel his back, baby. And once that mask came off, yeah. I did see the guy a couple of like rows behind me, he was just like <gasps> Like and it's and it's difficult to know whether people actually knew this was going to happen or whether that was like like a just a surprise. I guess there are some people that really don't spend much time. They're the lucky ones that stay away from social media. They have healthier lives for it, I guess. If you're not on Twitter but, or Instagram. But the thing is, right? So this is a question that I like pose to myself. If I didn't know that this was going to happen, and I saw the trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home, would I be like, that doesn't look that good of a trailer? Because psychologically, you know they're keeping stuff away from yeah, you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're teasing you. They're goading you. Well, but, if you that... didn't, but if you didn't know that was in it, that trailer would not look that special. I, I originally, the first trailer, I didn't think looked that special, even yeah. with knowing all the rumours. But I think they were just hoping that the fact that you got all these old villains with this new Spider-Man, that would be enough. 
People must have known to get the ticket sales that this film has got. Um, and I mean, when I say ticket sales, this thing broke 300 million. Um, I think over its opening weekend, it hit um, 7 million in the UK on Wednesday alone, which is unheard of for an opening film uh, for us. Especially in these, this day and age, man. People just didn't give yeah. a fuck. It's, I wonder if Ridley was sitting there thinking, bastards, like, <laughs> come out to see this the superhero crap exactly. wouldn't come out to see like my <laughs> last duel my work of art <laughs> so, and Nolan as well was probably pissed as well thinking damn <laughs> if I just listened everyone probably told him to hold Tenant back yeah oh, 300 at- million opening weekend Jeez. I don't reckon Tenant would have done good if they held it back a year if he wasn't so stubborn a year I- would have been fine for that film because look at it- or in Death on the Nile Kingsman, these yeah. films are willing to wait. Morbius, Batman, that was supposed to be out last year. Yeah, I think Kingsman's going to die at the cinema because yeah. I've got a feeling uh, in between Christmas and New Year's they're going to announce some restrictions. Yeah, it's not going to do well. No. So, yeah, so we got um, a nice bit of dialogue between like with MJ particularly and Andrew Garfield, which he just doesn't throw him bread at him, doesn't believe, doesn't trust it. He, <laughs> yeah, he says it. Like, crawl along the, the ceiling. <laughs> this is enough. Like, no, no, he isn't. <laughs> cruel. No. <laughs> so, and he, and he, I've got to admit, Garfield is different in this than he is in his Spider-Man films. He's a lot more comedic in this. But I wasn't mad at it because I feel like out of the dynamic of the freedom, yeah. he kind of added his own, he needed to be distinct. He when all three of them were together. He didn't have the weight of having to carry this film, so he could just have a good time. Yeah, that's what it looked like. That he was just having fun, because he'd always yeah. wanted... Because I remember when his came out, it was 2012. That was when Avengers came out. And he wanted to be part of the MCU, and he was always hoping that... And there apparently was negotiations when Sony and Marvel first got together, when they first started talking about bringing yeah. Spider over, that it was going to be Garfield. Right. But that fell through for whatever reason they decided to start again which and i wasn't bad but you feel sorry for andrew man because you know he really wanted yeah because apparently it surfaced yesterday that they were apparently they were in the early stages of planning a third film in for, for garfield yeah. Yeah. before it got scrapped and apparently we say that a lot but apparently there's talks maybe rumors that sony are interested in maybe bringing andrew back to take up the reins again in, in a separate spidey property i mean th- th- now the fact that they've done this you could do anything right that you could easily explain it to an audience exactly yeah people know it's a different world maybe they decide to kind of merge the venom because venom's gone back again which we'll get to later but and the morbius because more yeah we'll, we'll talk about that yeah that's just throwing my head in so after that funny bit of dialogue and him cleaning cobwebs off the ceiling they decide okay let's keep doing it let's yeah. <laughs> see parker then the one comes up below and then that's the one that got everyone <gasps> the ghast in the cinema when you see you didn't even see his head you just see him from the neck down <laughs> people knew the, straight away the tobe star um, i'll tell you what having watched these films last week it's just shocking how much older he looks i know 20, it has been 20 or 20, 20 years yeah. but it's you know like some some folks they they are trapped in that time because that's the only time you see them yeah because he hasn't been in a film for i think seven years He's literally been just being a dad. I don't think I've seen anything else. I, I know he did like Sea Biscuit. I don't, I've never yeah. watched that. That's what fucked his back up. Probably. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He and also there's also the he had a bit of a reputation back in his Playboy days of being a bit of a dick. Oh, was he now? Yeah, not being a very nice person to be around. But I'm hoping that being a dad softened him because he seemed nice on this. Oh. He seemed like a tough one. Uh, he's an actor. That's what he's. That's his old job, Eddie. He's, yeah. He did his part well, if that's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. So, um, yeah, Toby's back. And I've got to say that, even though it has been a few years yeah. with him and even Garfield, because Garfield was 28 when he did his first Spider-Man film. Already too old to be playing a 17-year-old, oh. but <laughs> bloody hell, crazy. But they're in good shape, considering, because fucking, look at us enough. <laughs> we ain't, we, yeah, someone but told us to put on a skin-tight bodysuit. They're Hollywood, mate. They yeah. they get paid to look like that. <laughs> we need six months m- minimum and five trainers to get anywhere near that yeah. sort of shape. No, yeah, but they, I mean, like Garfield's still actively acting, though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He is. 
But um, yeah, so it was so nice to see in the dynamic between like I know we're getting a little, I'm getting a bit further ahead, but the dynamic between the three of them just works so well in this film because they are distinctively different. You know, you yeah. got you got Toby who's just quiet, a quiet sort of nerdy, reserved, yeah. wise and, at this point. Yeah, and what they did in this film was I really liked. They didn't try and bring him in as Peter Parker from then. They brought him as Peter, but the older Peter Parker. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. So he's like the father figure, the mentor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he was always quiet anyway. He was just going back to those other ones. You kind of see that that was always that was always my issue. Even though I liked those films and I like him in them, he was too quiet. He was too reserved probably why i liked him so much for what Peter apart Parker's from a number three be. when he became like the the dancing <laughs> Peter Parker, <laughs> the jazz jazz as well man <laughs> 30 years too late for that um so yeah that was nice to see them all together and uh so they go to see peter who's on the roof morning aren't they and they explain their grief for what they've been through with uncle ben and uh, uh gwen stacy Rewatching them, you also realize that Andrew's Spider Man, he's been through so much because not only did he lose Ben and Gwen, the rest of them just lost one. He had to go through two, man. Um, oh, and, and and some payoff for that in this film. Ooh, okay. You want to jump straight to it? Let's jump straight to it. We theorized it would have to be Andrew to save mate, to save uh, MJ when she fell. And yeah, it did, and it worked. It brings bring some closure to his like arc of. Um... Of, of, of the story for him. Um, I mean, there was just so much going on in that last final act. You see him break down though when he had her in her arms, just like, Are you okay? Like, <laughs> like, Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't look at me right now. <laughs> Damn it, who's cutting onions? It was. Um, oh. yeah. No, that was good. That Goosebumps. was nice. Goosebumps. Yeah. Loved it. He, yeah. Because obviously he's like, imagine like if that really happened to you. Imagine the Oof. doing that a second time, the trauma that you would be and reliving. getting it right, yeah. And wish like, why couldn't I have done this yeah. last time? Why couldn't it have gone this way? It's like, oh, man. Uh, and even just to go back a bit, the dialogue when they're like cracking their backs, like, oh, my back. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you want to crack your back or when they talk about like their shooters, like their web slinging stuff. Yeah, like you make fluid in your body. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> So that, that's actually quite interesting about like the multiverse, right? Because whenever you think multiverse, you always think there is a version of me in every multiverse that can make every kind of decision. But you always kind of think the person will look the same. But I think Loki established that could be all different, yeah. it? it? Could be bloody yeah. alligator. Yeah. But, um, oh, one of the one of the videos I was watching last night kept talking about like variants, and they actually keep, every time there was an inconsistency, they go, "This could be a variant." Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. And also when they're talking about what's the what's the craziest villain you've ever fought? Because well, I fought an alien on Earth and in space. And the other one's like, I felt an alien that was a green, a black goo. <laughs> and I like the fact that they repeatedly acknowledge that Garfield is like the the <laughs> underappreciated Spider-Man all the time. He's like, that suck. I haven't played, I just placed the guy in a rhino suit. <laughs> and they're like, no, you are amazing. You you really <laughs> yeah. are so, I, I needed to hear that. <laughs> so well done so all these little bits all these little winks to the audience so well done loved it mm-hmm. absolutely <coughs> so we had the the epic fight which I get what you're saying about the, the, it, the it, it, it was just, there was just so much of like going on here sometimes you're too tend to find you lose track of what's like actually happening gotta watch it again more do what I did I will. When it comes to 4K disc, I will <laughs> rewatch. So, um, which part stuck out? So hold on. So, so, so hold on. So they've still got the end bit, right? Where um, you, you have they defeat the bosses, mm. and um, Stark has to now not Stark. Um, Doctor Strange has to do the spell again for real this time, right? Yeah, so everyone yeah. kind of thing. Now. In my mind, because this is like this is how like I was thinking. If I was to write this ending, this is how I would do it. Uh, but it's very Superman too. So you know, like when MJ and Peter are kissing, yeah. And MJ's thinking, "Oh, this is all over," and Peter's thinking, "This is the last time we're ever going to see each other until mm-hmm. I tell you again." How heartbreaking would it have been after they finished kissing? She's like, "Where am I? Who are you?" Oh, yeah, that would that would be. <laughs> <laughs> But like, then she has to push him away. Be like, what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Who 
who are you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that would have been really, really like just a gut punch. Oh, it. <laughs> oh, that would have been that would have been ugly. <laughs> but then, yeah, you wouldn't have gotten the scene afterwards. I think you needed to have. Yeah. I guess if you wanted to cut it a five minutes shorter, you could have done it that way. But I think that little coffee yeah. shop scene was important. What, just for what, him, what, oh, absolutely. Just to give some closure to everything. For him right? to acknowledge that with the intention of telling her and when he sees Ned as well, but then realizing that they're just fine. That and there's a cancer in their lives. Yeah. The fact that she's already hurt and also learning from the other Spideys from Garfield talking about his MJ. Gwen, realizing that, you know, they're always going to be in danger. It's better that I don't Absolutely. say. Absolutely. Yeah. Just like, oh you, poor, oh, you poor guy. You're on your own. You're going to be on your own for the rest of your life, boy. Um, there, there is a paper trail that's a bit of an issue in this film now. So now, at the end of this film, no one knows who Peter Parker is, right? Not even happy. Yeah. Right? They established that. But there is video footage of JJ saying um, Peter Parker is Spider-Man. There is pictures of Peter Parker on... You know, in that scene where MJ is talking to Peter on the phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are pictures of him that she has drawn on her bedroom. Um, I can go along with that in feeling that the spell is a retroactive spell that cancels everything. So it cancels the memory, but it can't. It's not. It's not such a powerful spell that it societal memories. I'm, yeah. I'm interpreting it as societal memory, which would mean any reference of him would be erased. Any reference. Uh, so my biggest issue with that wasn't what you're thinking. Because I was thinking everything yeah. gets wiped. My issue is he doesn't exist. So how is he able to rent an Get apartment? Well, even that, um, get into co- well, how can he get into college? There's no, there's no transcripts that he's yeah. ever been to school. <laughs> how can you rent an apartment when you don't have like a bank account? You well, know? I, I guess in New York, in those shady places, like when you get like a maybe shitty apartment. cash in hand, I guess. Yeah, but... but then where do you get a job? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> that's the issue because he literally is wiped from every system. That's yeah, how I'm I, interpreting it. He doesn't I exist. I don't think that's the case because he's because they specifically talk about memory. I, I'm I'm convinced there is a paper trail because Flash wrote a book about him. Yeah, it's all gone. No, it retroactively no, I, goes I back and wipes it all. That's how you societal memory. That's how so I'm doing it. So societal memory, but then they, are you also saying it's time travel? They like like yeah, he never wrote. It has, like he, yeah, because he it has never to go wrote back. Yeah, like it has he never to go wrote, back. So you're saying he never wrote the book? Yeah, literally, it wipes. Any reference no, he's no. ever had. He wiped the memory of everybody, but all the physical stuff is still there. But you're interpreting it as just their physical yeah. memory. I'm interpreting it as I'm, just Dr. any Strange societal cannot reference. cannot be so powerful that, yes, not, he, that he can wipe like the, like every physical thing of about a person and everyone's memories. Literally. Literally. Because then you'd also say there's footage of him with the rest of the Avengers. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, well, no, that's footage of Spider-Man. Oh, true, true, true. Yeah. No, but they no, but they they don't know about him though. The Avengers won't even know about him. So even no, they no, don't know about Spider Man. No, but surely they know Spider Man. Because Spider Man, are we yeah. saying Spider Man's been erased as well? Are we saying all the people that Spider Man has saved? No, no, you're right. Spider Man should still be a reference that. Yeah. Because Jane Jonas was talking about. But no, yeah, it has to because Jonas would know because there would still be posters yeah, everywhere. Exactly. This but is they're what I'm gone. saying. Those posters are gone, so it has uh, to be that. It's everything. That, that Every makes, reference of Peter Parker has been erased. That just from makes this Doctor timeline. Strange way too powerful. Like that he is, is. Like the, he literally is. I, I grant that he is, but that would be such an insane spell that you could wipe like everyone's memory and every physical aspect. Like you've changed everyone's like Flash Thompson has written a book about yeah. this dude. <laughs> that's yeah, that's what you're happening. saying. It's gone. You're yeah. saying like there are no pictures of Peter Parker through high school. Gone. Gone. Didn't didn't happen. Didn't go. How he's gonna get into college with that? I have no <laughs> idea. But that's what they did. Um, this film has kind of fucked over Morbius, though. In what because way? Because in the trailer for Morbius, he walks past the Spider-Man picture on the wall. We've established that with Venom, there isn't a Spider-Man in his universe. He had to cross over to this one to see that Spider-Man exists. But in Morbius, there's a poster of Spider-Man on his wall. And also at the end of the trailer, he tell he does that he does that joke when he stands over that guy and the guy's, who are yeah. you? He goes, I am Venom. So that establishes that he's connected to the Venom universe. But what's this Spider-Man then? Who is that when there's no Spider-Man in your universe? So maybe they just cut that out of the film. 
they're gonna have to, <laughs> whether they will give a shit with Sony. So whether they give a well, shit. Well, hold on. Have, have Sony? Uh, so, but do we absolutely know that Morbius is in the same universe as as Venom? He says he's, he does the Venom joke. The I am Venom. No, I'm only joking. I'm somebody else. No, but no, no. Does, but, but but no, I'm talking about the Morbius film. Yeah, I'm saying that's the in the Morbius yeah. trailer at the end. Yeah. You've seen oh, that. Oh right, bit. okay. Oh right. right. Yeah. Oh. When when some guy asks him, "Who are you?" He says, "I am Venom." He says, no, I'm joking. He <laughs> makes that joke in the Morbius trailer. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure these guys are very clever and they probably like figured out something out here. It's Sony. They're not. That, they don't <laughs> give enough. I don't care enough. But their way um, around that would be to add Garfield into this universe somehow, because they want to bring him back somehow. Rumors. So I, I haven't actually seen the um, uh, let uh, well, whatever whatever Venom Two is now called. Um, let there be. So Garfield. at the end, I've seen it. I've seen a little clip. So so I, I got an explanation as to how Venom knows about Spider Man because apparently all the Venoms are collect, collected. Yeah, um, connected. Yeah, like the like the book collective yeah. uh, memory. Yeah. Across all time and space, apparently. So yeah, that's how he kind of knows. So uh, and he crosses over into that universe, and we see him. You saw all of the post credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I like it that fact that all the other uh, villains decide to like go and find Spider Man, whereas like um, Tom well, Hardy he... just decided just to get drunk. Yeah, well, he's in Mexico. <laughs> he's stuck in Mexico, so I don't know. <laughs> we don't have to get back. So he's talking with. Uh... <laughs> Well, it was the, the dude from fucking um, Ted Lasso. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the, uh, the Spanish dude? Yeah. Football is life. <laughs> and he's explaining to him all of the whole thing of the Avengers. Like, there are more heroes here. And there's a tin man that died. And he goes, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and aliens. He goes, no, aliens, are, they bite people's heads off. They're, they're, they're sucky by it. It's like, no, no, no. This purple guy made my family disappear for five years, senor. And um, so, yeah, we're all hoping, once he says, oh, I have to go to New York from talk to spider and figured yo okay we're gonna get a little crossover here but then he gets sent away on the back. spell but but why does the, that stay if he gets sent back why doesn't yeah. that go with him because that's what the writers wrote <laughs> that's why yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah i guess that's what it is the writers decided <laughs> that's to, why that, that's the to stay wrote. yeah so that somehow has to make its way from mexico all the Wait, way to, it's, uh... it's made its way from outer space to Earth. I'm sure. It, <laughs> I'm sure Mexico to New York probably won't be difficult at all. And what's that going to lead to, though? Are we going to have two Spider-Man Venoms? Four. Are we going to end up having two Venoms, though? Is that Why not? Messy. You have a good Venom with us. That's your anti-hero Venom, and then you have like your evil Venom. And is there going to be another? Could Hardy play a different Eddie Brock? Could they give it to someone else? A different lady, bro. Uh, well, interesting. It, I guess it depends on how much Tom Hardy wants to play hardball on negotiations, right? I guess, because yeah, it, it would be yeah. That 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 could be interesting there. Um. So yeah, Spidey new apartment, starting from scratch, and it's it's so smart because we have a reboot. They rebooted Spider Man without rebooting spider-man and gave him like a whole origin story right he went through like in the other films he loses uncle ben in this one like he loses his aunt yeah uh very keeping with the times as well there um he's friendless alone and without love just the way yeah they've opened the door for a new love yeah. interest to come along so do we get like he's gwen stacy possibly gwen but i'm presumed but logic Writers may not think this way, but logic is saying that he's not going to want to get involved with regular chick because it's the same MJ situation. Like you're putting them in danger. So I'm reckoning it could be someone like I you probably you might have come across them in the cartoon, or you might not have. But Black Cat, not yet. No, she's very much Marvel's uh, Catwoman. Uh, Catwoman. Yeah, exactly the same sort of dynamic between her and Batman with Spider Man. Yeah. She's like oh, a thief. Right. She's like a thief who. Uses powers and what well, kind of cat like reflexes. So maybe they've teased that maybe Sony wanted to make a movie of her. So maybe they just inject her straight into um, Spider Man. So he has yeah. his own superpower. Someone else who has abilities that he could have a romantic, they could feel like, I'm not putting you in danger because you can take care of yourself. Mm, interesting. So many places they can go. I love it. I love it. So I, I do, this is the one thing that they're able to do with these films that they've not done before is open them up to like all the other characters, right? Because the other yeah. films, you know, they've always stayed kind of 
closed on this sort of thing. Whereas yeah. now you kind of feel they could have anything, right? Kingpin could be the next one. Yeah, very much so. I would love that if he did. Yeah, I would love it if they built him up. Like, you know how they do the Avengers yeah. over several films? Like, he's in a lot of films, and yeah. then he's, like, the bad guy in, like, a, a main film. Oof. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Like, all the, all the guys, everyone, everyone that he screwed over suddenly team up together. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be fun. <laughs> but it, and do you think this puts a, a nail in the coffin for um Sinister Six movie that Sony kept teasing? That they oh, God, I thought that's that's been dead for years now, isn't it? Because that was part of the Garfield saying. era. They keep saying they want to do it, though. They keep yeah. saying that they want to try and build up to these characters. I, I watched the Sinister Six two-part uh, cartoon the other night. Oh. Um, and you just kind of think, it's, it's just a load of villains that can't work together. <laughs> yeah. And how could you bring them into a film when you've cured them all now? <laughs> like, they fixed them all. So, at least five of them, at least. So, it's like, <laughs> all that's left is what? Vulture? Scorpion. Um, there's a bunch so more. There's, there's, a few there's more. like Shocker, there's Scorpion. Um, I think Rhino, uh, Rhino. Rhino. Is Rhino and Lizard different, right? Yes. Because yeah, yeah. one's a Lizard, one's a Rhino. Yes. Yeah. That's three of them. Yeah. Oh, uh, a Chameleon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You reminded me of all the other ones that I've kind of forgotten <laughs> about. The one, the B-list villains that really pop up never in the film. So yeah, we can actually see them now. Yeah. They can all come yeah. back. Lovely. Do we spend a couple of minutes talking about what we saw bright at the end of the credits? Doctor Strange Doctor and the Strange, a trailer. Which, a trailer. Which again makes the end like it solidifies what if as being a relevant property because it brings over the he's got a proper name, but I'm just gonna call him Dark Doctor Strange. He brought Dark Doctor Strange oh, over oh, yeah. into the film. Uh, Oh, has, hold on, has fuck? he come from What If, or is that a character in the Doctor Strange universe? He, we, that was his creation. We saw him in What If being created. Yeah, but yeah. it's uh, that's the story of that. Yeah, but but is that but is that just not a character from the comic books? It has happened in the comic books, but yeah. that, what we saw in What If is, you know, yeah. the yeah. origin of it. But anyway, yeah. So looks what? good doesn't it it makes it, you very excited it does me. what do you think the story is of this that the trailer is showing us because i have a theory i i'm assuming that like the multiverse problem hasn't been fixed right that it's still yeah. cracking there are still people trying to come through or people have come through and have and he can't send them back yeah or he wants to travel the multiverse because he's stuck to strange yeah, and he right. just does shit <laughs> like that <laughs> i'm thinking like we said it, it it's still broken yeah, it's not completely fixed. There's issues there for whatever reason. He goes to Wanda to help him because she knows that she's super powerful. Yeah, to give him that extra strength to fix it. She, seeing the potential of the multiverse and the potential that Vision could exist in a different universe, yeah, that she decides to go rogue again. It goes a yeah. bit crazy and uh, breaks away from Strange. Strange now, all fucked over, has to team up with his dark self because they were being introduced in that scene. Right. It wasn't like they were fighting or anything. They were like just meeting just, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it looks like he has to team with the black guy who was in the first Doctor Strange film, the villain, and yeah. has to team up with the dark Strange to take on Wonder. Like, like a, it, a weird it, Avengers movie. Yeah, it takes all of them to kind of have to try and yeah. not only fix the multiverse, but take down Wanda because she's the main villain. Interesting theory. That's what I'm thinking this guy. You better like bookmark that one and have it ready. Like when, <laughs> when, when we watch it, like I told you. <laughs> and it play it back. Yeah. So, um, do, do you know, um, so J. Michael Straczynski wrote a Spider-Man comic or, or a series. Um, so there was a story called, I think it's One World? or one day in the world or something. And that's where some of the elements for this film have come from. So in that, he goes to Strange, yeah. and he asks Strange to wipe everyone's memory, and Strange can't. And he goes to... To Mephisto. Mephisto, yeah, the devil dude. Who, in exchange for doing this, says that he has to break up with Mary Jane. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, and somebody on Twitter said, um, like, message Straczynski, and said... Um, They've used some of your work, like in the new film. Like he goes, he goes, how does this work? Do they contact you? Do they talk to you? Talk to you about this? And he goes, not a word. Yes, this <laughs> is classic old school Marvel where 
as soon as you took on a job, you didn't yep. own anything. Whether you create a character it's, or you write a story, it's it's. Stay on it. I mean, I, I guess I understand that from a business perspective, but I also think like when a movie makes like a billion dollars, and even if you were to give that person a million, you're not even giving them one percent. Yeah. Of like that profit, that one, one, one million would probably mean so much to it, one individual. Yeah, just not pat on the back. For well done. That's what yeah, it is. Just yeah, one yeah, million. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, anyway, we've we've got a letter here specifically about Spider Man yeah. uh, from one of our readers. Uh, sorry, sorry, from one of our listeners who has actually emailed us before. Um, his name is John. Um, he goes, What's "Hi up, guys, um, I haven't written into the show in a bit." I won't bore you with the details. It's been a rough little road, but I imagine to navigate it well. Uh, missed the last four or five episodes. Nice Catching up now. Love the podcast as always. Um, I just saw Spider-Man and I felt like I had to write in. The movie was incredible. Actually, yeah. even though I said some negative things, um, I thought the movie was was incredibly w- well done. Before you, before you continue with the email, yeah. what did you rate it? I was just going to ask you that as well. It's very difficult because I think something like this, I, before I give it a five, I would need to watch it multiple times. So I'm going to give it a four for now because it is highly um, entertaining. And if you just want a great experience, this is the film to go and see. If you're going to go and see one film in December and it's Matrix or it's into um, it's a Spider-Man, I would say go and watch Spider-Man. It's not the best Spider-Man film, but it is a great I, Spider-Man film. I think it is the best Spider-Man film. Ooh. I think, and having rewatched all of them, and putting yeah. nostalgia aside, I like them all in various different ways for various different reasons. Even the bad ones, I still find stuff to like. But this one, I've never had the joy that I had watching this one in terms of like just the, the, the moments that this one has that the other ones haven't had. It's just, how could they? If, this is like it's, the greatest but, hits but album. But this one wouldn't exist if it weren't for the others. True, but it yeah. doesn't mean, it it's, still means that it's I, a great... I, Film. The I Goblin is better in this than he was in his possibly, film. but I think Rebirth. Spider-Man Two, and I mean the Tobey Maguire one, and Still great, and the one that people are probably forgetting into the Spider Verse. Okay, okay, that yeah, I do forget that. Let's talk like that. Yeah, <laughs> but, but yeah, ah, ah, ah. But this one is so good. It's like I don't care. It's animated. It it, it is just that good. It even has a <laughs> wink. A wink to that one when it has the yeah. like you pre- the <laughs> aforementioned conversation with Electro about maybe there's yeah. a black Spider Man out there somewhere. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, everything is in this. Everything yeah. it's too good. Is it? It's the it, best. It's, it is good. It is good. But I'm not sure I, it's the best, but it's good. I'm agree. I'm not going to give it five this year. I want to see it again. How it how it settles over okay. like a six month but period time. For now, I'm giving it four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half. Right. So that's it. Email. email. What is this? Um, it was an event, the fun roller coaster ride with a yes. number of surprisingly emotionally pignoent moments. It deserves all the praise and hype. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't agree with some that it's a fan service film. Um, and I never understand that myself. Like, I'm a fan. I want to be serviced. Service me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's a love letter to the live action Spider Man films yes. of the past and the present. Um, I was happy how it gave us an idea about what Toby and Andrew have been up to while closing off their arcs. Compare this, and absolutely, I agree with this, compare this to something like CW's Crisis of Infinite <laughs> Earths, where they had the likes of right, Brandon Roth Superman, Conroy's Batman, and other meaningless glorified cameos as a bunch oh. of shoehorned in moments that do nothing else besides say, hey, remember this? Yeah. Everything in the Spider-Man movies actually serviced the story yes. while still tipping its hat to what has to come before. And i got to say, I was watching John Campier the other night, and even he was saying, after Infinite Earths, no, sorry, after Crisis on Infinite Earths, he was done. He goes, like, he goes, it that took just this long. killed it. <laughs> it killed that long. Well, no, that was like two years ago. Oh, oh, dad. Yeah, 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 that, that one. Um, um, and I couldn't help think of, do you remember John Snip? John Snap. He was part of that whole little group of guys that was like with Campy and all of them. Wait, wait, is that when he was on Collider? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah the, the one that passed away. When the passed oh, away. right. Okay. I just couldn't help but think about that guy because he was such a nerd, especially for Spider-Man. Just thinking, wow, you missed oh. You just can't help thinking people that didn't get to see it, man. Uh, 
God, yeah, um, and, and the, the other thing I was just going to say, uh, this needs to be a warning shot to DC for Flashpoint. I don't <laughs> want to see Michael Keaton for two minutes. I don't want to see all these cameos. They just come and oh, they go. They need to be part of the story. Oh, they got a, um, they have yeah. a hill to climb. <laughs> and they really do. Yeah, they do. Um, and that movie has been in post for so... No, not post. It's been pre-production for so long. It's just got disaster written all over it at this it's point. post-production uh, now. They're finished. Yeah, yeah, but it's been it was in pre-production for like yeah, 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 for like for, for years. Um, so he says, um, honestly, I'm so happy for Andrew, who really got the short end of the stick. I feel like this movie really showed what he can do, uh, and that he does deserve to be mentioned with the other iterations of his character. Yeah. He's been trending on Twitter with people wanting an amazing Spider-Man three, where he fights Tom Hardy's Venom. Even if it doesn't happen, yeah. it's great. He got to be part of the MCU. He gets to enjoy the actual love and adulation for the role that he clearly loved. Um, it was incredible seeing Peter's Spider-Man senses displayed in Mirror Dimension scene when he was fighting Strange. When he was uh, astro projecting, you could actually see the comic book wiggle irons um, above his head. And every time his body dodges Strange as he reaches for the box. Um, I also think it's funny that... Oh, are you, are you like no, 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 no. The, no. The two in the same thing <laughs> um, I also think it's funny that five years ago I wouldn't believe that so many people would believe uh, Mysterio uh, but would Q Anon uh, sorry Q Anon uh, yeah. Trump anti-vaxxers yeah. etc it yeah. might be the most realistic part of the movie because yeah. um, and I can't believe I have to write this uh, but I don't think like some people think it was stupid for Peter to want to save the villains like I'll put my hand up and that there was a little bit yeah, of me yeah. Uh, Peter's whole thing is that he tries no matter what to save everybody. Yeah, that's he his makes character. mistakes, but he tries. Heroes yeah. don't do what we want them to do. They do what's right. The hard thing to do, if there's a chance to save somebody, he will do it. Aunt May saw this. He was going down a dark path, not trying to be cheesy, but she saw that he needed to save these guys to save himself. He was turning pessimistic, letting the situation get to him. She wanted to make sure he became the hero he meant, was meant to be. There you go. By and the way. Well, let's quickly say yep. Holland's performance, man. Like he really, because you're saying oh. that he, he was just all jittering in the old ones and just like a nerdy kid. He really got to run a gamut of... Um, yeah, in this one, it, his performance was much better than the others because he just wasn't running around going, Mr. Stark, Mr. Stark. Yeah, rage when he <laughs> killed Goblin at the end when he just beat yeah, the shit out of him. Oh, we even forgot to talk about like the stabbing of Tobey oh, Maguire. Did you think he was? Do you think? Did you think that was it? I I yeah, did think. Yeah. I was like, oh, I was like, don't end this film on that note. Just don't do this. <laughs> don't. Come on. Um. By the way, and I think we just talked about this, because by the way, Venom was there because in the last Venom movie, they said all the Venoms are connected across the multiverse. And because Tom's, t sorry, Toby's Venom knew Peter Parker, Tom oh, Hardy was pulled in. Yes, the other one, the other, yeah, yeah. the Topher, what's that, actor Topher Grace? Topher Grace, yes. Yeah, he's Venom, yeah. Yes. This is why Sony... Um, shouldn't make live action Spider-Man movies because they do shit like this when left to their own devices. <laughs> um, oh, and what fucking universe does Mo Morbius take place in? Yeah. Uh, Toby <laughs> Spider-Man is spray painted on a wall. Andrew's Oscorp is seen. Tom Holland's <laughs> Vulture is there. And Venom is referenced. Oh, I forgot about Vulture. I forgot but about Vulture. The, He's in the trailer as well. Yeah, so what the, the fuck does that thing make sense? Is, in this multiverse, like you could do anything. You could literally say, oh, in this multiverse, this is this is how it is. It Sony are fucking it up because it just <laughs> makes no sense. It doesn't kind of connect properly. It just ah. Oh. Um, and, <laughs> and we're to the last paragraph here. Um, also, I know you guys are fans of Babylon Five because you have great taste. Uh, I believe in one of the earlier episodes, Mo even mentioned having a trading guard of the guy. Did you notice uh, he had a thank you in the credits? Uh, we were just talking about this earlier. It's because he was actually wrote the comic book that one of the main storylines of the film was based on. Love you guys. Can't wait to hear you talk about this film. Um, I was actually having a look on Comicsology the other night. I think like the, that story is like 250 or something. So I might actually buy it um, and, um, and have a read of it. Because I think that could be quite interesting. Because apparently that storyline was quite divisive when it came out. Because people did not like the fact that Spider-Man or Peter Parker broke up with Mary Jane. Yeah, uh, what well, that's actually reminded me that one thing I noticed from going back to watch the Holland ones, not the Holland, the, um, the Garfield, no, no, not the Garfield, Jesus Christ, the, the original, the Maguire, the Maguire yeah. Spider Man's, is that 
more than anything, they're very much, it's very much a love story, more than anything. Oh, it very much is. And I think that's one of the bits I really like about it. I mean, I really like Kirsten Dunst. I don't. Uh, but the, well, but the, you don't? I like Dunst. I don't like the Mary Jane, because, dude, like she's Mary dating... Jane. She's dating... Who's she dating at the time? When she's dating... She basically jumps from one... She dick hopping from one guy Hold to on, the is she Is she dating Flash Thompson? I can't remember. Is, it, is that is that is that guy? He's the really tall guy. Is his name Flash? Yeah, the that's the um, what's his face, isn't it? The um, the True Blood dude. Oh, oh my god, oh, why is my right. brain blanking? You know the True you Blood just, guy, the Wolf. You just you just watched it the other day. Yeah, uh, my brain is a mush. But anyway, but she basically uh, jumps from him to uh, hold on, hold James on. Are you, are you, to James are you Franco? Now, are you while she's with her now? Yes, oh, I am. On. While she's it's with like, James Franco, she makes out with Spider Man. Why she's dating? Franco, she makes out with Spider Man, and then when she's engaged in the other film to Flash Thompson, the proper Flash, oh, was he yeah. Flash, the military guy? I can't remember. I'm losing my. Brain. No, she was she was engaged to JJ's son, wasn't she? The astronaut nephew. Is it his nephew? I believe it was nephew. Son, wasn't it? Yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah. But when she's engaged to that dude, yeah, because she's in she, love. She's in love she's with like, Peter. Make Peter out, keeps- kiss me, Peter. But she's Peter, always, she'll then break up with the other guys you're with. No, you keep, she wants she like, Peter to acknowledge. No, because Peter won't acknowledge like his feelings for her. She's with she it. wants no no, she wants him to kiss her so like she can he can realize that like he can't hold back her. Then why is she with these other dudes then? Why is she wasting because, time but, fucking Emma? But, and then she abandons a guy on his wedding no, day just to break Peter, up with him first. She literally Peter, leaves him at the altar. Hold she, on, do you want her to be a nun mean. or something? Peter keeps rejecting her. Then take the hint. <laughs> Leave the guy alone. <laughs> but like, but like, Peter is her one. Then focus on Peter <laughs> and stop picking up all these other but things. Like she and then can't, try and cheat with she him. She can't waste her life waiting for Peter to like make up his mind. But she's pining for him. She's hoping. She's terrible, man. She is. Oh, so bad. No, she no, is so no, bad. no, no, no. When? It's, it's, When's it's the best? Gorgeous, it's a gorgeous story. Um, but it is. It is very, very well done. Like it um, never gets cheesy. It never gets to the point of where it's overbearing well, the and it's the one only. My third one's cheese. brilliant, man. Come on, come oh, on, Eddie. Geez. That's come on. Who doesn't like a bit of jazz and uh, <laughs> a bit of emo Peter? Come on. And I'm not saying that ironically uh, or sarcastically either. Oh, <laughs> no, that was that was dodgy. Um, yeah, is that um it from the email? Uh, that that's the end of the email. Thank you, John. Very good. Um, well written. We have next week the Matrix to look forward to to talk about. Um, yes. I guess next week is our end of year show as well. We're doing that next week. That it, it's next week is the last week of the year. Okay, I guess I have to start putting a list together. I've got to start watching films. Yeah, <laughs> fuck. Damn, Matrix, Matrix, Matrix. Mm, mm. I don't know where I sit with this. I guess we'll uh, see how it turns out. I'm a little worried. Yeah. But I'm gonna um, give it a chance. Like, yes, like I said, tomorrow, Matrix two and three. Yeah. Okay. So Mo, if anyone else wants to get in contact with us, right folks, it's about if, Spider-Man or even if you've got any stuff about Matrix you wanna throw in there before it comes. Let's yep, know. if you want to email us, folks, we are at TATM podcast at gmail.com. Um, if you want to tweet us, we are talking movies three. And if you want to follow us on Instagram, we are talking at the movies. Um, I really need to put the pictures of my Shoresco box set up on um, on um, yeah, on Instagram. I saw that. That was beautiful. Love that. How many films is in that? That is, um, I think there are eight films in that. Ooh, nice. All restored. Oh, there might be more than that. Actually, it might be t- 10 films altogether. Or all, all, all wrist or all, all brand. No, not uh, some from 4K scans, from, from some from 2K scans, but they all beautifully restored. Lots of like language audio um, options, brand new subtitles, special features, mm. commentaries. Nice, cool. Okay, guys. So, um, yeah, from me, Eddie Reese. Me, Mo. See you guys next week. See you, folks. Later.